Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. A veteran Liberal Senator has broken government ranks to call for a rise in the GST. Queensland Senator Ian McDonald says the tax should apply to fresh food. He says that could pay for an $80 billion black hole in the state funding created by his own government's budget. The government has been defending its budget on multiple battlefronts and today from even its own side. Liberal Senator Ian MacDonald says the consumption tax has to be adjusted to help fund state hospitals and schools. Clearly, uh, the states should be in charge of health and education, in my view, but they can't do it without some additional revenue, and the broadening of the GST may provide that. Last night, Treasurer Joe Hockey was put on the spot over whether the $7 doctor co-payment was a new tax. It is a payment, but it comes out of a pocket. It comes out of someone's pocket, a taxpayer's pocket. Effectively, uh, but it, it, effectively a tax. Well, I, w whatever you want, Tony. It didn't take long for his patience to be tested. You want to call it a tax, you can call it anything you want. You can call it a rabbit. But, finally... Uh, it is a tax, it's cool, it's tax -free. The Prime Minister today seized on reports that Australia's credit rating could be damaged if the Senate blocks the budget. Our AAA credit rating is at risk and if that goes, well, um, that does all sorts of damage uh, to our country's fundamental economic standing. Not so, says the opposition. And if they lose us our AAA credit rating, then we hold the Abbott government squarely responsible. It's happened on their watch, their issue. Former Liberal PM Malcolm Fraser once said, life was not meant to be easy. He could have been talking about selling budgets too. Danny Saba, QUT News. The state government has announced a summit to discuss its 30-year plan for Queensland schools. It hopes to end disputes in the education sector about the future. How are you? The Premier's push for education today was all about a school of thoughts. We want to bring uh, people from across Queensland on the 25th of September for a summit to talk about the next 30 years for education. It comes after billions of dollars of state education funding was slashed in last week's federal budget. I'm going to fight for Queensland and uh, I've talked to the Prime Minister. The plan is in response to disagreements between parents, schools, the government and unions about Queensland education. We have had our differences in the past, but this is not about short-term budget measures. This is about the next 30 years for education. But it wasn't just education on the Premier's agenda today. He was again asked about the dismissal of the former Assistant Health Minister, Chris Davis. Did the member for Stafford raise with the Premier either personally or in writing, his concerns about powerful interests peddling their interest influence in the LNP. At no time prior to that day had uh, the former Assistant Minister raised it with the Attorney-General, the Chairman of the relevant committee, myself personally. There was also some solemn news in State Parliament today. A state funeral will be held in the memory of Formula One champion Sir Jack Brabham. Saskia Edwards, QUT News. An eight-year-old girl attacked by a man at her Melbourne primary school is so traumatised by the incident she can't sleep. The little girl was waiting for her parents when the predator attacked. The man dragged the schoolgirl to a secluded section of the Glen Ferry primary school yard. He verbally and physically abused her before starting to undress her. Luckily, she escaped and ran to safety. The man fled through the front gates of the school. Parents hope the offender is caught soon. They have to be safe and they should be safe at school, so that's our main concern and I'm sure they are and this is a one-off and we'll get him. Police released this identikit photo. The man is fair-skinned and aged in his 20s, with blue eyes and short, cropped blonde hair shaved on one side. We're asking for assistance from the general public. If anyone has seen this person or knows this person, can they please contact us? Parents have been asked to speak to their children about strangers. Tegan West, QUT News. The fight against crime in Logan is being boosted with 12 new CCTV cameras. A federal government grant of almost $1 million is helping put the focus on crime hotspots. The federal member for Ford, Bert Van Manen, was given a tour of the CCTV control centre. The new cameras are funded from the federal government's Safer Street program. They'll be located in Beanley CBD, Shaler Park, Logan Lee and on Chamber Flats Road. 
is designed to create a safer community for all concerned, to create also a safer environment for business to conduct their operations and provide opportunities for employment in the local community. Council funds have already gone into making this new monitoring facility an even more effective tool against crime. Council's $1 million budget commitment for the new monitoring room will provide the state-of-the-art video wall monitoring. Crime rates in Logan have dropped by 20% and it's hoped that the presence of CCTV cameras will instill confidence in businesses and attract people to the area. The benefit of placing these cameras in those city centres, it actually attracts business to those areas, it revitalises those community centres and it attracts people to those places where they feel safe. Business owners in the town are welcoming the cameras. I think CCTV footage in the area would be really beneficial as we've experienced a few break-ins um, on a regular basis, so I definitely think it would benefit Beanley. The CCTV cameras will be installed over the next 12 months. Edwina Seselja, QUT News. New research shows an increasing amount of skin cancer is being misdiagnosed. The Cancer Council is urging people to be more aware of any abnormalities on their skin and to seek medical advice. Research from the Australasian Journal of Dermatology reveals that some types of melanoma are being missed by GPs and dermatologists. The study shows that less common melanomas present differently to other cancers. A melanoma usually has pigment, but sometimes some types of melanomas don't have pigment. While doctors remove one of these from Ruth Arm's leg, more than half of Australia's fatal melanoma cases aren't diagnosed early enough. When um, I was told that you know I had a form of cancer that could potentially kill me, I was, it was, um, it was scary. The Cancer Council urges that people should take immediate action. We're encouraging Queenslanders to be vigilant, to make sure they check their skin and to see their GPs regularly. Changes to look for in the skin include new moles, moles that have increased in size and spots that look different to others. Queenslanders are urged to go and see their GP for a skin check and if necessary, get a referral to a dermatologist. Natalie Cameron, QT News. The Maroons are gearing up to defend their Origin Champion title for a record ninth year in a row. But with some tickets almost doubling in price, Suncorp Stadium may be emptier than usual. Next Wednesday's match will be the 100th State of Origin game, but ticket sales are looking poor. State of Origin games at Suncorp usually sell out in hours. This year, almost 8,000 tickets are still available, with general public seating costing as much as $250. That's like a weekly, weekly um, rent for some people, isn't it, on my house? So, um, probably a bit too much for me. Can't afford to go to the State of Origin because it would be about $600. I mean, that would be so great if they could lower the prices. They'd have a packed stadium, but there's still heaps of people going. The Maroons coach says he understands why fans feel this way. I guess the league's got to make some... You know, tough decisions and say they're sorry, you know, and admit they're wrong and, you know, make it more available to, you know, our core, our core supporters, you know, our, you know, our blue collar workers and mums and dads who, you know, love, love the game so much and want to come to Origin. Players say fans are an important part of the Origin experience. It's sort of like the extra player on the field at times. Uh, when you're doing it tough and you've got that home ground or home fan advantage, um, you really do uh, hear them and it's, no, it, it's, it's great. The winning team from last year's Origin final remains mostly unchanged, with the addition of a new back rower. Sam Thiaday, who has a calf injury, will be replaced by Aidan Guerra. The match will also be a chance for Queensland to honour the late Arthur Beetson. The 11th jersey will be retired from the game in respect of the man known as the father of Origin. Big Artie led the Maroons onto Lang Park in the first state of origin, 99 matches ago. Claire McCarty, QUT News. The Pies and the Eagles are set to clash on the weekend in what could be a crucial match for Collingwood's top eighth place. The Magpie spot is in serious doubt after their defeat at the Talons of the Crows last week. The Magpies need to pull off the weekend win, but the added pressure on coach Nathan Buckley to make the right selections isn't going to help. Two players fighting for the chance to play are Nathan Brown and Alex Fasolo. Our foot's feeling really good. Um, hopefully I get through training this week, I mean it's only Monday, but um, we'll see how we go, but it's feeling really good. Collingwood are the favourites going into the game, but West Coast aren't looking to go down without a fight. Yeah, I'm coming up to my best footy again, um, coming into this next block. The body's ready to go and... Um, 
Yeah, just look out Collingwood. The Eagles have four wins from eight heading into the weekend, but coach Adam Simpson believes his team's slow starts might be the reason for their sluggish finishes. Jim Malo, QT News. Good evening. It's time to take a look at the weather. And today was once again cloudy in the southeast. Both Brisbane and the Sunshine Coast hit a top of 23 degrees, while the Gold Coast was a degree cooler. Ipswich was also in the early 20s. Around the nation tomorrow and Sydney can expect a possible, shower, a possible morning shower with a max of 23. Canberra and Melbourne will hit the high teens with a possible early shower. Hobart will be partly cloudy and a bit cooler with a low of five. A shower or two for Perth and mostly sunny in Adelaide. And up north, Darwin will remain sunny with a max of 33 degrees. Turning to the Queensland forecast now, tops of 27 in Cairns and Townsville tomorrow, a few showers for Mackay and Rockhampton, Bundaberg can expect to sit in the mid-20s, with Mount Isa mostly sunny and a possible shower or two in Longreach. Now the outlook for Brisbane over the next few days, possible showers to continue throughout the week, with a max of 25 degrees for Thursday and Friday. A top of 26 expected tomorrow. That brings you up to date with the weather. Well, that's all the news we have for now. We'll be back tomorrow with more QUT news. Goodbye. Goodbye.